<laughs> Celebrate, we have a quorum. <laughs> Council member, the meeting is now live. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for joining us to, on today's Trade, Travel, and Tourism Committee. Um, today's a special meeting, uh, Tuesday, October 21st. I welcome those who are tuning in. Uh, with that, I'd ask for a roll call to establish quorum. Councilmember Buscaino? Here. Councilmember Bonin? Here. Councilmember Lee? Absent. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Bonin, for joining us. Um, I want to start off um, with asking Port of LA for a report back uh, since the posting of today's agenda. Uh, on Tuesday, October 18th, um, you may have seen in the news, a shipping container fell off the back of a truck crushing a parked car near Anaheim Street and McFarland in Wilmington. Uh, as we know, the, um, the concerns of the, uh, the backlog at the port, the ongoing congestion um, is now resulting in serious public safety impacts in our, neighboring, our neighborhoods surrounding the port, uh, including um, container stacking uh, in violation of city code trucks blocking streets and driveways, illegal parking of trailers and chassis on residential streets. Now, um, though our, our council rules don't allow us, uh, allow this body to take an official action in a special meeting, I'd like to unofficially request that the Harbor Department submit a, a written report in 30 days on all available land that can potentially be used for shipping container storage. Also provide additional recommendations to alleviate the uh, negative impacts of the ongoing congestion of the Port of LA and surrounding neighborhoods. Uh, we, our office has been flooded with calls from concerned residents, primarily in the Wilmington um, neighborhoods. Um, so, um, Mr. Clerk, that'll be the direction, though not an official action. So can you just document that for us, please? Certainly, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much. So with that, um, let's begin the portion of public comment um, and ask the city clerk to read the call-in instructions. Members of the public who would like to offer public comment on the items listed on the agenda should call 1-669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 161-863-2891 and then press pound. Press pound again when prompted for a participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star 9 to request to speak. Thank you. Los miembros del Consejo Público que desean ofrecer los comentarios públicos sobre los puntos acerca de la orden del día deben llamar al 1-669-254-5252 y utilizar el número de identificación de la reunión 161-863-2891. Luego pulsar numeral. Vuelva a pulsar numeral cuando se le pida la identificación del participante. Una vez admitido en la reunión, pulse asterisco 9 para solicitar la palabra. Thank you, Ms. Garcia. I was about to cue you, but you're on it. Appreciate that. Uh, um, now the city attorney to read today's rules, please. Thank you, Chairman. To members of the public calling in, when it is your turn to speak, please state which of the agenda items you would like to speak on. You have one minute per item to speak. Two minutes total for multiple agenda items. Since this is a special meeting, we will not be taking general public comment. We will tell you when your time is up. When speaking on the agenda items, you must be on topic. If you're making a general public comment, you must address topics in the jurisdiction of the committee. Our goal is to get through as many speakers as we can. If you're not speaking on topic or, or if we cannot tell whether you're speaking on an agenda item, you will get one brief warning from me or the chairman. If you do not immediately get clearly on topic or again stray off topic, the chairman will cut you off and you will forfeit the rest of your speaking time and we will move on to the next speaker. Finally, for members of the public calling in to speak, as soon as you hear someone address you, you are live in the committee meeting. If you're also listening to the meeting on your computer, channel 35 or other device, please turn down the volumes on those devices. There is a time delay between the live meeting and the broadcast on those devices, and it will cause confusion if you continue to listen in on your other devices. Thank you. Thank you. A los miembros del público que llamen cuando sea su turno de hablar, por favor, indiquen sobre cuál de los puntos del orden del día les gustaría intervenir. Tienen un minuto para hablar y dos minutos en total para los varios puntos del día. Un minuto para los comentarios del público en general. Les agradecemos cuando su tiempo se haya terminado. 
Cuando hable sobre los puntos de la orden del día, usted debe centrarse en el tema específico. Si hace un comentario público general, debe abordar temas de jurisdicción de este comité. Nuestro objetivo es que intervenga el mayor número de oradores posibles. Si usted no se centra en el tema o si no está hablando del punto del orden del día, recibirá una breve advertencia, ya sea mía o del presidente. Si no se centra en el tema y se desvía de él, el presidente le retirará el uso de la palabra y perderá el resto de su tiempo de intervención. Y pasaremos al siguiente orador. Por último, en caso de que los miembros del público intervengan en cuanto escuchen a alguien que se dirige a ustedes, estarán en directa en la reunión de la comisión. Si también están escuchando la reunión en su ordenador o en el canal 35 en otro dispositivo, le pedimos que por favor bajen el volumen ya que estos dispositivos tienen un intermediario. Hay un retardo entre la reunión directa y la transmisión en estos dispositivos y causará confusión si sigue escuchando sus otros dispositivos. Gracias. Este es el intérprete hablando. Al llegar a la sección de los comentarios, le agradecería a los miembros del público por favor hacer una pausa para que el intérprete pueda traducir correctamente la información en su intervención. Gracias. Thank you, Ms. Garcia. With that, we'll turn to the public comment portion of today's special meeting. Um, and we'll dedicate the next 40 minutes to public comment on an agenda item. With that, uh, Dennis, floor is yours. You can handle the uh, call in. Absolutely, Mr. Chair. Um, first caller, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hello, hi, I'm Javon Houston. I work at LAX. I'm a customer service agent. And I'm also a member of SEIU USWW. Um, I'm speaking on public comment. I urge the committee to vote yes on items two, three, and four. Our black and brown communities must be taken account of this approval. LAX workers need good jobs, better public transportation, affordable housing, clean air, and environmental justice in our neighborhoods. I live with COPD. I work in LAX and I also live seven minutes away from LAX. My son has asthma. I live with respiratory illness on a daily basis. I breathe these toxic fumes. I see planes dumping fuel over my head. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Speaker, please unmute yourself. Caller with the phone number ending in 6145. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Dennis, can you just remind uh, folks how to unmute themselves? Yes, absolutely. Press star six to unmute. Okay, one last call and I'll ask our translator to please repeat this after me. Caller with the phone number ending in 6145. A la persona que está llamando con el número 6145. Por favor, desmutearse. Okay, we'll come back to them. Next caller, phone number ending in 1142. Please unmute. Hi, my name is Annabelle Gonzalez. I'm an airport worker and a cancer survivor. I'm a camel cleaner and often work at the ramp. I'm exposed to the exhaust from the airplane. We need to work in an environment where we don't have to be scared of the air that we breathe. That is why I'm urging this committee to vote yes on motion two, three, and four. My and my co-workers' voice should be heard and considered when taking a vote for this project. 
Airport workers need good jobs, free or affordable parking, and access to safe and affordable transportation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Next caller, please unmute yourself and state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Caller with the phone number ending in 6673, please press star six to unmute. Oh, it looks like they dropped off. Let's move on. Caller ending in 8835, please press star six to unmute. La persona que tiene el número en 8835, por favor presionar asterisco 6 para que pueda hablar. Okay, we're going to move on to the next caller, but go back to that last one. Phone number. Next caller, please press star six to unmute. Do you see callers in the queue? I know they can hear us. There we go. I think we have someone on five. Caller ending in five two zero seven. Go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, I'd like to uh, speak in public comment. Go ahead, sir. You have three minutes. Uh, yes, uh, my name is Kevin Orange. I work for LAX, and I've been working there for 15 years. I'm a member of SEIU, uh, USWW, and I am, I'm a committed member, and I want to vote yes on items two, three, and four. Okay, thank you, caller. Thank you. Next caller, please unmute, state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Caller ending in 5207, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Okay, we're going to move on to the next caller. Go ahead, caller. Phone number ending in 5207. A la persona que está llamando del número 5207, por favor presionar asterisco 6 para poder hablar. Go ahead, color ending in 4281. Color ending in 4281. You are live in the meeting. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. A la persona con el número 4281, por favor, ya está en la reunión. Puede hablar, diga su nombre y qué le gustaría decir. Okay, we're going to move on to the next caller. Phone number ending in 6145. En la persona que su número termina en 6145, por favor presiona el número 6, asterisco 6 para hablar. Ok, let's move on to the next caller.
Caller ending in 6145, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. La persona que su número termina en 6145, por favor presionar estrisco 6, diga su nombre y qué quisiera comentar. One more time, caller in, ending in 6145. Please press star six to unmute. Una vez más, a la persona que su número termina en el 6145, por favor presionar asterisco 6 para que le podamos escuchar. And callers, if you can hear us, please press star six to unmute yourself. Por favor, recordarse de presionar asterisco 6 para que nosotros vamos a escucharle. Next caller, phone number ending in 0320. Please press star 6 to unmute. La siguiente persona que su número termina en 0320, por favor, presionar asterisco 6. Go ahead, caller, you're on. Hi, my name is Wilma Sharp. I work in Terminal 4, G2 American Airlines. I am the lead ACAMP runner. I would like to vote yes on number two, three, and four. It is very important that we get this bill passed. Thank you very much, caller. Thank you. Okay, next, caller ending in 8835. Good afternoon. My name is Maisha Woolrich. I am a worker at LAX as a customer service agent for G2, also a lead with the bus ops uh, for four years now. I am a member of USWW. I do urge the community members to vote yes on items two, three, and four. Our black and brown communities must be taken into account with the approval for this project. Airport workers need good jobs, better public assistance, but excuse me, better public transportation, affordable parking or free parking, clean air, environmental justice for our neighborhood. As myself working as in, in bus ops, I smell the jet blast from the planes every single day. It can burn our eyes, our throats and cause nausea. Um, I really do ask that the committee, the committee vote yes on the agenda. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Next, we're going to go back to caller ending in 5207. La persona que llama con el número de teléfono 45207, por favor presionar asterisco 6 para que le podamos escuchar. One more time, caller ending in 5207, please press star six to unmute. Una última vez a la persona que llama con el número 45207, por favor presionar asterisco 6 para que se le pueda escuchar. Okay, we're going to move on to the next call. Caller ending in 2485. La persona que termina su teléfono en 2485, por favor, presionar asterisco 6 para que se le pueda escuchar. Go ahead, caller. You're live in the meeting. Hi. I'll be speaking in a public comment in support of agenda items 2, 3, and 4. My name is Mariah Mitchell, and I work at LAX as a customer service agent for six years. I am a member of USWW. I urge the committee members to vote yes on items two, three, and four. 
black and brown communities must be taken into account with the approval of this project. Airport workers need good jobs, better public transportation, affordable parking, clean air, and environmental justice for our neighborhoods, and especially um, better pay. Minimum wage is not enough to live in, within the city, um, and a living wage is not enough. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Uh, I was just reminded by our information technology agency that some of the folks um, in the participants panel may just be listening and may not want to speak. Um, so I do not have oh, one more hand raised. Make sure you raise your hand if you would like to speak. OK. Next, next caller, phone number ending in 6673. There you go. You are live in the meeting. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Veronica De Lara. I'm with SEIU USWW, and I'll be speaking on items two, three, and four. Along with our efforts to address the impacts of this project on residents and workers who live near the airport and work at LAX, our community partners are also advocating with us to address the impacts of admissions on their environment, public transportation, and good jobs at LAX. With the support of 15 environmental justice organizations, those include Sunrise Movement LA, 350 Ventura County Climate Hub, Center for Biological Diversity, Physicians for Social Responsibility, Alliance of California for Community Empowerment, Suffer Foundation LA, Center for Community Action and Environmental Justice, Strategic Action for Justice Economy, Trust South LA, CLU, Unidad, Center for Environmental Health, Natural Resources Defense Council, Koreatown Immigrants Worker Alliance, and Stop Oak Expansion Coalition. Thank you for your time. Thank you, caller. We've got one more in the queue, but I don't see a hand raised. Let's go to them and, uh, and see if they'd like to speak. Caller ending in 4281, would you like to address the committee? Go ahead, caller. Caller ending in 4281. Go, go ahead. You are live in the meeting. Uh, mi nombre es Esmeralda Espinosa. Yo trabajo en el aeropuerto como por nueve años. Um, soy miembro del uh, USWW. Invito a los miembros del comité a que voten sí en las mociones 234. Uh, tienen que incluir a las comunidades inmigrantes en la aprobación de este proyecto. Los trabajadores del aeropuerto necesitamos buenos trabajos, mejor transporte público, estacionamiento accesible, um, aire limpio y justicia ambiental para nuestros vecindarios y más dinero para seguro uh, médico. Gracias. My name is Esmeralda Espinosa. I work at the LAX uh, for nine years. I'm part of the USWW, and I would like to say yes to numbers two, three, and four, including immigrants in these projects with better public transportation, better air for us to breathe, also for environmental, environmental justice, and also having a better uh, budget for us to have medical uh, assistance. Thank you. And I think we're down to our last caller. Caller ending in 8835, would you like to address the committee? A la persona que su número termine en 8835, usted quisiera decir algo al comité? Hearing none, I think we, last call, caller 8835. Okay, let's um, let's end public comment. Thank you all. We for did have two more people on the line from number 8142 and 6525 who wanted to speak. Sorry. Okay, so Dennis, just direct them on how they get back on the queue. I don't see them on the queue. I don't see them on here. Um, anyone who'd like to address the committee, call 669 
254-5252 and use meeting ID number 161-863-2891 and then press pound. Press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Los miembros del público que deseen ofrecer comentarios acerca de este punto del día de la orden pueden marcar al 1669-254-5252, utilizar el número de identificación de la reunión 161-863-2891, presionar numeral y nuevamente, nuevamente numeral cuando se le pida la identificación del participante. Una vez cuando usted se ha admitido a la reunión, pulse asterisco 9 para solicitar la palabra. Okay, Mr. Chair, so far we just have one caller on the queue. This is 8835. Let's try to go to them one last time. Caller ending in 8835. Go ahead. A la persona que llama con el número 8835, por favor. Es su tiempo. Shannon, if you want, you can get those callers back in the queue. Um, let's move on with the um, with the meeting. Okay, with that, um, Mr. Bonnet, I ask that we, uh, unless you want to hold uh, any of these following items on the desk, uh, items five, six, and seven, approve those on consent. Uh, so moved. Fantastic. Roll call vote, please, on items five, six, and seven. Councilmember Buscaino. Yes. Councilmember Bonin. Yes. Items five, six, and seven are approved. Thank you so much, Andrew. With that, um, let's um, let's now take up two, three, and four together. Understood. Item two, motion, Bond and Harris Dawson, Coretz, relative to modernizing the Los Angeles International Airport by improving transit, reducing traffic, and pollution throughout through the use of the LAX transportation management operation and related matters. Item three, motion Bonin, Krikorian, Kretz, relative to decarbonizing LAX and reaching net zero energy consumption through power generation opportunities, sustainable aviation fuel adoption, near 100% electrification of ground-based activities, incentivizing electric vehicle parking and related matters. Item four, motion Bonin et al, Raman, relative to requesting the Board of Airport Commissioners and Los Angeles World Airports to collaborate with the City and the Airport Trade and Services Union to enter into a memorandum of understanding covering airport workers to address economic and environmental concerns such as worker protections, transportation and traffic reductions, and community environmental and health studies and related matters. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. With that, um, we'll take these items together. I'll First, defer to the maker of these motions, uh, and that's our colleague, Mr. Bonin, uh, to make some opening comments. We'll then hear from Mr. Arbacci and his team uh, to respond and make some comments on these items. And then we have with us Jane Martin from USWW uh, to provide a five minute testimony on the items, particularly, I believe, uh, item, on all the items as well. So, Mr. Bonin, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, and uh, thank you uh, to Dennis on your staff for uh, working together with uh, my team to put this agenda together. You know, uh, uh, you and I have a very similar dynamic where we have in our districts these big, huge assets, which are vital to, to the region, um, vital to the neighborhoods they're in, um, uh, and can either be a force for good or a force for bad for the environment, for neighborhoods. Um, uh, and for the people who work in and around them. And um, uh, you've done some remarkable work transforming that port over the past decade. And we're engaged in a similar effort with LAX uh, where uh, for, for, for the most part, most of the battles that have uh, uh, gone on for, for, for generations have been put to rest and, and the airport has, has, has made a commitment uh, uh, that has been shared by the community. Uh, and by the mayor and by myself, 
uh, that uh, we wanted LAX to be a world-class airport that is a first-class neighbor. Um, we also want LAX to be a, a first-class employer, and we want this, this huge effort that is now underway, the ATMP, uh, one of the big cornerstones of this multi-billion dollar, uh, multi-year uh, uh, airport modernization project to be something that works for everybody, uh, that works for absolutely everybody. So um, we, we prepared these three motions. And I want to thank also Mr. Ribacci and his staff uh, for working with us as, as, as well as with labor and, and, and various other stakeholders to make sure that as we do the ATMP, we are doing right by, by everybody in Los Angeles. We're doing right by workers. We're doing right by uh, our transportation system. We're doing right by, by, by air quality and sustainability, um, uh, by, by climate change, by environmental justice, equity. We, we're a very progressive city and, and we always seek an opportunity to lead and this is an opportunity for us to do so. So before us are, 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 are three different motions to, to help us get there. They took them in pieces. Um, one uh, deals with transportation, uh, indicating that by, by strengthening transportation options and by building on the future investments that the LAMP project and the APM will bring to the world's Thursday, third busiest airport, uh, we, can, we can help deliver on this commitment of an LAX for all. Um, this, the motion addresses concerns that, that, that workers have about transit to work being too expensive, uh, addresses a number of concerns that, that, that I have about the scope of the uh, transportation management organization, uh, the role LA, uh, LA Lawa can, can and should be playing in, in corralling everybody and, and uh, all the, the stakeholders in the area who are big employers and bring them all to the table to be part of an organization. Um, uh, uh, and then the, the second motion really deals with climate change and about uh, power consumption and the ability for uh, Laowa to generate zero emissions power on site at, at LAX and Van Nuys uh, and at, at, at Palmdale uh, to really be an agent for environmental justice and, and, and be a, a site for generating renewable power uh, and, and promoting sustainable aviation fuels. We can really be uh, the, the, the greenest, most sustainable airport uh, in the country, if not the world. Uh, our airport leads on that already, and this would be uh, leading by, by even significantly greater strides. And the third is, is to take seriously a commitment this council, and, and, and thank you, this airport has had for a long time, is to uh, be a good employer uh, and to be uh, a, a good landlord and to take care of the workers in and around uh, the airport. And this third motion uh, asks, and I want to thank the Board of Airport Commissioners and, and allow the staff for their willingness to engage uh, with me and with labor on this to, to establish an MOU to, to hold parties accountable on working conditions and benefits, to improve transportation costs and quality, to address uh, EJ concerns from, from, from neighbors and from union members, uh, and, and, and to really lock all this in as sort of ironclad commitments that, that, that we're dedicated to as we are really doing this, this amazing and incredible, uh, never thought I would live to see the day uh, ATMP project. Um, so uh, with that, uh, lots of questions, lots to discuss because there's a big scope there. Uh, but again, want to thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank Mr. Urbachi and his staff, uh, and thank uh, all of our, our our stakeholders in labor, in the environmental community, yes. uh, in residences in Westchester and, and Playa del Rey uh, for working together on these ideas and this initiatives uh, to, to deliver an LAX for all. Thank you, Mr. Bonin. With that, I'll turn to Mr. Abachi. Thank you very much, council member. Um, first of all, I want to thank the, the callers uh, the workers from LAX who called in to express their comments. And so it's appreciated to hear their viewpoints. Um, and just want to say that how I, I and the entire Lawa team really want to thank and really appreciate the time and thought that Council Member Bonin and his staff and, and, and his colleagues have put into these very thoughtful and detailed suggestions for um, how to improve the relationship between LAX workers here and the local community. Um, thank uh, Council Member Bonin for his leadership and his stewardship in making sure that we, we are a, a first-class neighbor. So thank you for that. 
With respect to the motion related to the transportation agenda, that's item number two, well, we've already been making great strides in this area through the establishment of the transportation management organization and our mobility strategic plan. Um, yeah, we, we, um, we look forward to having more discussions about how we can improve those uh, and make them even better than uh, we think they already um, are, already leading in the industry. But we look forward to discussions on how you can uh, make those even better. And the, the ideas that are described in the motion to improve the efficiency of employee transit and reduce the cost of mass transit options for LAX employees will be very carefully considered. And we look forward to reporting back to the council on the feasibility of implementing these uh, specific ideas. Um, you know, with respect to the motion related to the decarbonization and electrification of LAX, uh, item three, BAWA has just re recently um, released its latest sustainability report and believes that uh, significant progress will continue to be made on our uh, reducing emissions as we implement our um, very ambitious sustainability action plan, which we dub only moving to zero. Um, again, we look forward to discussions on how we can, uh, you know, enhance that. So we've been... Uh, very actively, we've been promoting the application of electrification technologies in several areas at the airport, including ground service equipment and buses. And we actively engaged in the purchase and using all electric buses and have um, you know, a bold plan of how to continue to expand on the use of those and other electric uh, vehicles. We've also um, engaged and are engaged uh, in the exploration of uh, doing even more around solar technology and increasing the resiliency on our campus. And we've been enthusiastic supporters of sustainable aviation fuel as a, a path to reducing emissions from airplanes. And we're, we continue to look for ways to partner with our stakeholders, including our airlines, to increase the availability of sustainable aviation fuel for, for all of our operators. And we've been very uh, active. We've been advocated strongly for these programs at the federal and state level, both individually as an airport, but also in conjunction with our industry associations and coalitions. And we will continue to do that. This is a very important area moving forward. And we, we look forward to continue to report on these activities um, as, we, as we move forward on them. And then finally, with respect to the protection of workers at LAX, you know, we're, we're very proud of our, our long history as a leader, both locally and nationally on worker protections. And we have a lot of things that are you know, uh, setting the benchmark across the country as far as you know, working with labor. Um, and on several of these issues, including uh, employee uh, transportation, zero emissions technologies, uh, air quality impacts, we've already received uh, similar and independent requests from our board of airport commissioners for us to come up with solutions in those areas. And we also continue to engage very closely with our labor partners to find more ways that we can work together toward our, our shared goals. So um, you know, with that, we look forward to reporting on our direction and progress to both you, this body, but also to our Board of Air Com Airport Commissioners over the coming months. And we look forward to hearing from our, our labor partners today and um, answering any questions the committee might have. Thank you so much. Um, let's now hear from Jane Martin from the USWW. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair Buscaino and Council Member Bonin, and also to Mr. Abachi and Michelle and to your team. Um, you know, as you heard today, SEIU USWW members are watching this project closely and uh, you know are very concerned about the impacts on their neighborhoods. Um, our members, you know, we really want to appreciate that you are moving so quickly to address the concerns that we have with the modernization project that could expand operations at the airport. Um, and especially want to appreciate the leadership of Council Member Bonin on this. You know, airport workers have always been essential workers, but during the pandemic, that description became official. Cabin cleaners, baggage handlers, wheelchair agents, ramp agents, security guards, these workers saw their lives and their conditions change drastically. And they found themselves serving a vital public health function. 
you know, airport workers also happen to be largely immigrants and people of color, groups that have shown much more high risk of getting COVID and of dying from it. And tragically, you know, we saw multiple oh. outbreaks of COVID at the airport and we did lose both, you know, our members and family members of our members during the pandemic. Um, you know, black and brown workers have been at the front line of this pandemic and, you know, it's been most dangerous in their communities. Airport workers have been really more exposed to the economic ramifications as well. You know, so many folks are still working part time. Many folks, you know, were out of work for months and months. And then at the same time, you know, many of our members have been facing the challenges of living in communities that are disproportionately impacted by environmental harm. SEIU USWW alone represents almost 4,000 employees at LAX and an additional uh, over 1,000 security and janitorial service workers who live within six miles of the airport. And it's the black and brown communities each of the airport that are the ones disproportionately feeling the traffic, air quality, and noise impacts of LAX operations. And they will be the ones to suffer long term from the impacts of any expanded operations. The South Los Angeles area already has some of the highest asthma emergency visit and hospitalization rates in the country. And the zip code adjacent to LAX has one of the highest rates of asthma of any neighborhood in LA County. And it's no coincidence, you know, that five out of the 10 least white census tracts in LA County are just east of the airport. You heard already from our members, you know, that airport workers continue to struggle with the high cost of living, as well as with healthcare costs, even during the pandemic. Many work multiple jobs to support their families. And workers also struggle with the high cost of transportation and parking, as well as limited service that's available during the, you know, the off hours, the nighttime hours when they actually have to go to and from the airport. So by supporting these motions, the committee is really going to help ensure that the city of Los Angeles takes immediate steps to address the issues of environmental racism and improve the quality of life for working class communities. Tackling the urgent need to have safe, affordable, reliable transportation for airport workers can also reduce the amount of emissions from commuting, you know, that come from increase of operations at the airport. In the coming years, the city's, you know, preparing to host all kinds of exciting events, the Super Bowl, the Olympics, the World Cup, you know, we're really going to be on the global stage. And it's critical that we take this opportunity to be a leading model for equitable and just economy. And, you know, also for, you know, prioritizing the environment with these projects. Um, we're really excited to see how we can move this forward in a way that uh, it can erase, you know, the decades of harm to community of color, communities of color. We've been working at CIU USWW in a coalition with local environmental justice organizations, local residents, LAX workers, to identify more meaningful solutions to address the impacts of emissions, to create sustainable transportation options, and to ensure the health of the surrounding community and workers. And you know, we're very eager to engage in conversations with the airport emissions administration about possible solutions and some of the ideas that we're very excited about is subsidizing free transit passes for LAX employees, increasing transit options for LAX employees, free parking for LAX employees who carpool. We're also excited about possibilities to reduce emissions from both on-road airport vehicles and ground support equipment and to encourage the reduced emissions from airplanes as well. Um, also studies and services to address the health impacts on LAX workers and surrounding communities and better policies to ensure responsible contracting and safe workplaces. It's only with the support of this council through these motions that those conversations can be successful. And I thank you um, for your willingness to address these important issues and urge you to you know, continue your advocacy to ensure that all stakeholders, including LAX workers and the black around communities around the airport are part of the solutions to tackle these injustices of the past. We're really hopeful that together we can make improvements to this project and to LAX that we can all be really proud of. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shane, for your testimony and for joining us. Mr. Bonin, questions? Uh, not a lot of questions because I've, my staff and I have been talking with Lawa staff and yep. with Jane and her team pretty much daily for <laughs> several months, it seems. I uh, did want to just sort of underscore a, a couple things, though, for, for, for Lala. One, on the uh, TMO, um, which I've been very pleased that Lala has been moving forward on the, the TMO, as I proposed it was probably a couple of years ago now. Uh, but I, but I, I do want to really strongly encourage and, and, and push and insist that the, the airport really lean into this and, and go even bigger and more comprehensive. Um, LAX is just, it's a major jobs node. It is, um, uh, uh, it, it is sort of the hub of, of the economy. And right now uh, in, in its sort of infant stages, the TMO only includes Lawa land, although there are really 
you know, thousands upon thousands of, of, of jobs and commuters steps away along the gateway to LA bid and Inglewood and, and El Segundo. And, and these commuters impact traffic and pollution for the whole region, but especially uh, for uh, uh, people in my area and especially for people trying to come and go to the airport, the people who are traveling through the airport and the people who are working at the airport. So I, I really do want to report back as part of this asking Lawa for a formal study of an independent TMO of which uh, Lawa is a, is, is a huge part. Um, uh, that, that's sort of one of the, the, the key things I want to leave on this one, uh, as well as um, uh, uh, exploring the, the possibility of free transit for airport based uh, employees. Uh, they just simply are not paid uh, well enough and finding ways to make it easier for them to get to the airport and do uh, the essential work that, um, that, that Jane so eloquently talked about, I think is essential. Um, uh, on the uh, EJ piece, I think Justin uh, outlined some, some some key points there, and I'm, I haven't seen the, the the sustainability action plan, the latest uh, update. I'm really eager to uh, to see that and dig into it. I think one of the untold stories of success in Los Angeles is uh, how well uh, our airport has done uh, in in leading, and I'm eager to hear about the uh, the, the latest. Um, uh, really want to you know see the future come alive where we're phasing in zero emission ground-based vehicles uh, and and where the thing that really excites me is the idea about generating renewable power at LAX at Van Nuys and at that sprawling and empty property we have out in Palmdale that that, that probably hardly anybody on this call uh, has ever been to um, uh, that that does right by our commitment to the next generation, but it also does right by the people who live in Inglewood, who live in Lenox, who live in Del Air, who who live in in Westchester, and all those neighborhoods. Um, and then uh, I won't even try to elaborate on what Jane had to say about the the um, uh, the MOU and 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 the, uh, the 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 working conditions and the working standards. Uh, I just think we have an incredible power as a city and as an airport uh, to really be a, a muscular partner and advocate for the people who are, are doing such vital work. So I um, just want to leave those thoughts as we sort of move forward. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate that. Anyone welcome to respond? By way of motion, I mean, was this I'm happy to support uh, those report backs moving forward. Mike. Great. Well, I would uh, move approval then. <laughs> Fantastic, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair. Part of we vote. have a few more um, callers. Um, yeah. Before we um, we have one caller that has been patiently waiting. Caller okay. coming in. And then we'll, one, we'll, four, move on, we'll move on approving two, three, four. Okay. Go ahead, caller. 8142, go ahead. Hello, Mr. Chair. Uh, Please unmute yourself. Caller ending in 8142. Please press star 9 to unmute. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Go ahead, caller. We Hi, can hear um, you. Yes, uh, um, thank you for, for taking care, you know, uh, our citizen. I'm a citizen. My name is Oscar, last name Antonio. I have been working at the airport for 22 years. And I really feel kind of sad when we have, you know, uh, Lagua expanding the airport with the airlines. And, and we're going to be the last ones, you know, that, we, they don't think about us, you know, so, and I didn't even want to believe before, you know, that, that most of the people working at the airport are immig immigrants, and most of the time they look at us as the second class people, you know, it's something sad for me living in this country, because I'm coming from outside, and uh, working at the airport, you know, even me, I was sick before because the construction, okay, and we're at the front line online every day so we we were here at the pandemic we didn't take off i see a lot of my co-workers losing medical insurance and we still you know fighting every day 
to be covered with the medical insurance. And I don't understand why we have to pay parking, you know, working for a big airport where, when they do millions of dollars every day. When the city works, they don't pay parking. And what about us? We're the one who make less money, and we still have to to see how to survive, you know. So, um, like I said, my name is Oscar. I'm a member of the SEIU, USWW. And I urge the community members, you know, to, to vote yes on item two, three, and number four. And like I said, black and brown communities must be taken into account, you know, with approval of the project. Airport workers, we need good jobs. We need a better public transportation, affordable parking, clean and environment, you know, justice for our neighbors, not only workers, our neighbors too. And even like two weeks ago, I had two co-workers, they were sick because of the contamination of the air, you know, in Terminal 1, between Terminal 1 and Terminal 2. So I hope so you're going to listen to us as a people and... Um, I hope so, you know, you guys can make the change for, for, for us and for the community. So I thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Oscar, for joining us today for your testimony. Next caller. Mr. Chair, that is all the callers we have in the queue. Fantastic. So let's um, approve items two, three, and four, which we just heard, uh, and roll call vote, please. Councilmember Buscaino. Yes. Councilmember Bonin. Yes. Councilmember Lee, absent. Uh, items two, three, and four are approved. Thank you. Uh, again, thanks to our panel for joining us, Mr. Abachi, Ms. Martin. Thank you so much for being here. Thank and you. all those callers uh, who joined us. Okay, so our final item uh, is item number one. Mr. Clerk, if you can please read that into the record. Los Angeles Harbor Department to present a verbal report relative to Altice at the Port of Los Angeles. Fantastic. Beautiful day down here at the waterfront. Uh, highs in the mid-70s. And what we did today, Mr. Bonin, we uh, unveiled the plaque of our uh, new promenade uh, next to our Maritime Museum with uh, Gene Soroka, commissioners. Um, really exciting time. She brought up your, your uh, father-in-law and, and Dave Arian, uh, how he reminded us when the port's successful, the community's successful, and that thanks to this um, effort that and, and a policy that dedicates revenues uh, into the community, we're able to move forward on uh, infrastructure projects uh, such as the LA Waterfront. And speaking of which, part of that entire alignment of bringing uh, not only um, art, culture, entertainment, but also a new blue economy. Uh, and here before us, we have um, Mike Galvin, I don't know if Jenny Crusoe's on, Tim McCosker, to speak on an update of, of Altice uh, at the Port of Los Angeles. And- uh, give I'm us here. Oh, there you are. Hey, Jenny, good to see you. Um, I feel like I'm seeing two CD15 council members. It must be my glass. Easy, easy. <laughs> One day at a time. <laughs> time. That was a penalty flag. Just throw it. That personal foul. <laughs> so exciting times. I know there's um, uh, incredible progress being made there. I know there's also been some frustrations on uh, some of the uh, um, the efforts that's been made on um, deferring some grant dollars um, as you've heard here in committee, but we wanted to give an opportunity for the port and also um, um, CEO uh, Tim and our founding executive director, Jan Jenny Caruso, to come speak before the committee. So um, turn over to you. I'd like to hear more about the update on the solar panel installation project uh, and uh, President Biden's Build Back Better grant um, let's see where we're at. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much, Councilman. Really, really appreciate it. Congratulations on the uh, on the promenade announcement. It's uh, directly tied to us too, and it's going to come through yes. our site as we continue to move. So I appreciate you very much on that. I think I think, Councilman, if you don't mind, I'll probably start with the return of the grant because it it yes. it then it then uh, dovetails nicely right into what's what's next. Perfect. Um, as you know. Uh, with your, you know, significant help and leadership, um, we applied for and received the grant of $3 million uh, from the EDA back in 2016. 
And that grant was designed for infrastructure and the infrastructure around the entirety of uh, 58 through 60. So warehouse 58, 59, and 60, the whole 180,000 square feet. Before the grant, before that 2016 application, our cost estimates were at $15 million for the 58 through 60, uh, which is an important part of the story. The port and Alta C were co-applicants on the grant. And I will say that some of the EDA terms uh, for accepting the grant were complicated by the manner in which the port holds the property. The trusteeship and not uh, fee ownership, as lawyers say, uh, made it uh, hard for us and took many, many, many months for us to resolve with EDA under their rules. EDA also told us that, um, that because this was infrastructure only, we, uh, the dollars could not touch the building. And that also related to the manner in which the port holds the property. And so we had to go back in and adjust some of the, some of the, the documents and we, we worked on a new bid package. And while that bid package was pending, you all recall that our uh, last administration had a government shutdown, which didn't help out either and extended some time. But the punchline of this story is that we wound up putting out that bid package for the, uh, what started as a $15 million project uh, of which 3 million would be EDA dollars. We put out that bid package in March of 2019 and it came back at $43 million. There was one for a little over $40 million and there was one at $43 million. And it was, um, uh, you know, so we went back to the EDA and said, hey, this is, a, this is a smaller investment in a larger project, larger than expected, given some of the condition of the building and given some of the requirements for the construction. And the EDA was great. They worked with us, uh, but at a certain point, they could, not, they could not extend the time period. There's a tight time, uh, five-year time period. Uh, we went back to the port and asked the port, well, how about if we divide up the project and build one warehouse at a time or one warehouse that would come in closer to 12 to $15 million and then the other two next? The port actually processed that application and we were granted it, but the EDA was not, allowed, not able to renovate. And so it was actually EDA staff that told us, which is great actually, the EDA staff, the project folks who are continuous from one administration to another, told us, um, we love your project. We do understand the cost difference now, the $43 million. And what we think you should do is do a return for convenience. It's a technical term under the regulations, a return for convenience. And that will put you in a position with the next administration, because now Biden had, was the president elect. With the next administration, we have every expectation that we're going to have a larger process where we're going to infuse big EDA dollars back into the community to regenerate the economy. And so we did the, we did the, return, the, the return for convenience and literally within weeks of the return of the money, the Build Back Better application was filed, which is the part of the story council members that leads very really nicely into, into where we are today. So the Build Back Better opportunity went out uh, to the world, uh, to every jurisdiction in the United States, um, saying, give us your, give us your proposals uh, for projects that will come in somewhere between 25 and $70 million. Remembering that last round was, was a much smaller number. Give us your proposals. So we took a look at it. We had all to see, and you know, our community here at the port, and we reached out to LAEDC, who's done some analysis for us on both on the original EDA grant and then on the blue economy and said, what do you think of this idea? What if we proposed a multi-party proposal for the convergence of the blue economy and the green economy? Because we know that Alta C has been working so hard in this blue economy sector, and thank you, Councilman, for your support on that. And that involves the aquaculture and the robotics and the offshore energy opportunities. But when it hits the dock, when these, when these products and these opportunities hit the dock and they dry up, they become green opportunities. And we know that so that Lacey and LAEDC and the port and so many partners are working in the green economy. We think we could be really, really, really creative with this LAEDC proposal if we combine the two. I mean, with this uh, uh, EDA proposal, if we combine these two and call it the convergence of the blue and the green economy. So we spent several weeks. We worked on it really, really di diligently. We have about nine or 10 core members. We have 36 partners. And just last week, we put in a complete application for what's called phase one of the EDA. 
and we're one of dozens from the state of California who put in a phase one, but I have to say, I think ours is exceptional. We had it, we had uh, two third party reviews of it by, by experts who told us it was exceptional. And so we put that in and we will know by mid December, whether or not we make it through phase one. If we make it through phase one, the group gets $500,000 uh, to finish the, put the fine touches on the proposal and then by March, we uh, everybody who makes it from phase one submits a phase two proposal for that 25 to $75 million um, application. And council member, thank you very much for your letter of support. Uh, we, we are down the road on this proposal. We feel really, really, really good about it. Um, and I can stop there, but I could also talk a little bit about the most recent successes with some of our funding. And what's your, what's your will, councilman? Yep. Let's hear about money. Love to hear. Okay, good. Money. Let's hear about money. So in parallel with that, uh, like a lot of folks in the world, we were following the state budget and the state and the, the governor and the state legislators were telling us that they were really, really interested in, um, in sustainability and something to fight climate change. Uh, obviously, it's really at the heart of what we're trying to do. And so with the support of you, Councilman, with the support of the mayor, with the support of the city family, we actually put in a request uh, through our senator, our local senator, uh, uh, Stephen Bradford and, and Patrick O'Donnell, our assembly member, uh, for a $6 million um, a grant to build what would be half of 58. In parallel with that, we had gone back to the port and said, you know, port, we appreciate that you are committed to this project and that there is about $38 million of infrastructure built into this project which we would receive in tranches as we proceed but given covid and given all these stories and given where we are and given this opportunity at the state it would make sense if you would advance no not new money but advance some of that money to us and we said how about six million dollars advance it and we will match it with other money and so on one track we we, we sat with the port and we came up with this this closely negotiated, uh, uh, carefully negotiated amendment to our lease to say that they would match up to $6 million towards the construction of 58 and we would have to go find the rest of the money. And then we were on the same on a parallel track talking to the state of California, the state of California budget trailer bill came down and we in fact had $6 million through um, natural resources. Um, and so that means that we have now with the with the grant and with the match, we have $12 million towards uh, the, build, the construction of 58. On a third parallel track, and sorry about this, but a third parallel track, we have also completed the negotiations with the uh, solar company uh, to provide 180,000 square feet of a solar array on the top of all three structures. And what's really important about that is that not only does it provide um, renewable energies uh, that we feed back into the system, but that feed in tariff give, puts a, us in a position where essentially the company is prepaying some of that benefit and putting it back into about two and a half million dollars worth of infrastructure. We are also pending on that final agreement at the port level. I mean, the port is working on some aspect of those approvals and we are working on the APPs and the different various permits that will allow that solar construction which could have started by now, but will start very soon. So that's a lot of information. I'll stop right there and I'm happy to, to defer to my colleagues uh, uh, or to the port to speak or to answer questions. Yeah, Jenny or, or Mike or, or Seth, would you like to contribute? We don't have a lot to add. Tim summed it up. We're working on the Fourth Amendment for <clears throat> the Alta Sea Agreement, which will essentially advance that $6 million really making sure that Alta C has that seed money to get this first warehouse up and running. And we truly believe that once the first warehouse gets up and running, the proof of concept will be there and that will expedite delivery of the other warehouses, whether it be uh, partially or fully through the grant from the EDA that we're all working hard on or, or through other sources or a combination of, of both. Uh, we really believe that proof of concept will, will push us to that level and be able to allow Alta C to really expedite construction and bring in uh, the tenants that they already have lined up uh, to occupy those those buildings. So the combination of that and us continuing to work hard together to get the solar built and the electrical infrastructure in there that is necessary for all these tenants to 
<clears throat> be viable um, are, are two important things that we're working on in collaboration with Altus right now. And we're all geared up to have that amendment done uh, second board meeting of November and then on to city council for hopefully an expedited review after that. Yep, that was my question. Uh, when can we expect to see that? You just answered it. Thank you so much, Mike. Uh, any other concerns we should have moving forward? Um, any obstacles that we project? Tim, yeah. I, I'm very, uh, uh, just to anticipate a challenge, when this money comes from the state of California, uh, because it's a, in a trailer bill and it's one of hun a couple hundred um, allocations, the language is very simple. It says that, um, that state resources is going to cut a check to the city of Los Angeles for the purposes of the Port of Los Angeles's Los Angeles for the purpose of Alta C and our birth 58 project. That many handoffs can, can become clumsy <laughs> and I, we just need to keep our eye on it. I've fortunately, I have spoken to the uh, controller who, who has his staff's eye out for it. And I will appreciate very much everything we can do at the city to streamline that movement of money so that it, so that we get the full value. So there's no direct deposit here in state and local government. Yeah. No. Uh, no, we don't. We don't. It really does move. It moves through the controller and it moves to the port and then from the port to us. And we have uh, beneficial state bank is, you know, on the ready, you know, one of those great, you know, banks. That are, yeah. uh, and we I just want to keep my eye on it, make sure it moves as quickly as it can. Sure. And aside from, you know, sending letters to the state in, in support of uh, the Build Back Better grant, uh, mm -hmm. what else can we do as we're competing with others in the state? Right, right. Oh, well, you, you know, you have done a lot uh, to, to get to this point. The, you know, we had a whole series of letters and Jenny probably knows better than I. We had 70 letters plus that went in for the for the state grant. And we've had more than that going for the, the Build Back Better grant. But I think that what we will need is that should we be fortunate enough, knock on wood, to make it through phase one. Phase two is going to be extraordinarily important and we're going to have a series of studies that will be funded with the $500,000, but $500,000 for the studies for a $70 million grant doesn't go as far as one might think. We will probably require a whole bunch of cooperation from DOT, uh, uh, Water and Power, uh, the port, which I know we will have, but it would be extraordinarily helpful, Councilman, if you could continue to ride herd with us to make sure that all the city departments are sort of pushing in the same direction. Appreciate that. Before if Mike has any questions, comments, I'd like to ask, I know we're talking about the infrastructure, pretty much the, the physical improvements of the campus. What are we doing um, on, you know, funding workforce development, entrepreneurship programs there all to see? I know you have a great working relationship uh, with the Boys and Girls Clubs, uh, as well as uh, local nonprofits. I'd mm -hmm. like to hear more about the workforce development piece and entrepreneurship. Sure. We have um, relationships with, um, Braid Theory, who you've worked with very, very closely, and with Montauk uh, uh, Technologies, they are both uh, working with the, with other with, with company. There are tenants and there are our clients, and they, they work with companies uh, that accelerate and uh, incubate businesses. And then we just recently signed on a South LA incubator uh, that uh, that that needed access to you know, ocean technologies. And so working with Barbara Stanton at the uh, Entrepreneurial Center, uh, we've been able to bring in companies uh, that had, were landlocked essentially, and we are pairing them one by one with uh, tenants or partners. And for example, there's a company that is being paired with our new USC Aquaculture Lab. And it's a company that uh, is out of Compton a uh, 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 woman-owned, uh, minority-owned company that grows seaweed. And so what we have done is we are actually reaching into our own pocket and going to our friends to come up with training programs for being able to build product. Um, and so that is the model, actually. We're actually using that as, as part of the model for what, we're, what we are pitching to uh, uh, EDA. Nice. Mm -hmm. It is really a beautiful story. Yes, okay. Jenny. In, a, in addition to that, and your office helped us um, with a community grant by, that Senator Padilla recommended, which is an ocean pathway grant, which is creating the first aquaculture certificate program with Santa Monica College. And it's a career pathway grabbing kids from Boys and Girls Club using LA Maritime Institute as well to get kids interested in this new 
you know, these new great jobs in the blue economy and then starting these certificate programs for, you know, companies that don't necessarily need, you know, advanced degrees for good jobs. So we're really excited about that. And your office did help us with a letter of support. And we are in the bill. So we're very excited about that $600,000 grant. Nice. Just direct deposit, whatever we need to do. <laughs> I'd like to say, I know you bought, you wanted me to wear a t-shirt saying shovels, but it is true. We've got shovels now, uh, Joe. So yes, Debbie, we're thank excited. you. Good progress. Appreciate the update. Stephanie, you're good. Like to add anything? Okay. Uh, Mike? Uh, Mike me or Mike him? Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, Mike Bonnet. <laughs> Uh, I almost thought you wanted me to make the presentation when you called Mike earlier. Uh, no, uh, no questions for me. Uh, this is uh, pretty damn impressive and exciting. Exciting stuff. Thank you so much. We want to thank you, Councilman. We want to thank the city. We want to thank the port. I mean, I, it's, it's, it is it's it is difficult. It's bumpy. And Mike Galvin knows better than anybody. When it gets bumpy, I get angry. But um, <laughs> But we keep moving. We keep moving. We relentless. Appreciate that, Tim. Thanks for your leadership as well. You and your entire board, Jenny, amazing work. Um, you know, we also, we're still, um, there's still concerns about having large events in warehouses today. Still trying to get through that with the fire department and planning. Uh, I know at, um, at, 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 um, at Crafted, they still can't have large scale events. Hopefully we, we get through that and figure out a way to improve uh, the retrofit, the seismic retrofit there. Um, well, good work. Thank you so much. Really appreciate uh, the update. Um, so Mr. Bond and Mike, there's no action. Just in, This is just a presentation. Uh, so it's only a discussion item, I'm reminded. And with that, um, before we adjourn, I do want to um, recognize um, Andrew. Andrew's our new city clerk. Um, Andrew Sue, as you remember, he worked for David Rue. And um, you are um, the face of the city clerk's new information kiosk in City Hall that Dennis just sent me. Congratulations. Did you get, were you, uh, were you asked, were you like, were you told to do that or did you volunteer? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was uh, graciously given the opportunity and voluntold. Too. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> you get a SAG card for that? I don't know. Well, well, you beat Mr. Buscaino out for the position, so congratulations. Congrats. I, I, yeah, I got denied. Like, uh, thanks for reminding me. <laughs> thanks so much, y'all. Appreciate uh, what a great, great committee meeting. Uh, and in the words of Tom LaBonge, go forth and serve and love the city of Los Angeles. We are now adjourned. Thank you. Amen. Thanks. Thanks.